Oh, it's six something in the morning. Gotta wake up so I can go meet Nathan downstairs. Fly to Alabama camp for breakfast. I'll see y'all there. Oh, I have grits and bacon. Eggs and bacon. This looks like when you come back into the United States from out of the country and you got to go through right. customs. <laughs> I'll be like, hey. Championships, 
10 SEC championships, four Heisman Trophy winners, and 31 NFL first round draft picks since he's been at Alabama. But what very few people understand, guys, is what goes in to making all of those on the field accomplishments a reality. He absolutely demands that his players are surrounded by the very best and head coach, Nick Saban. Everybody had a negative attitude about going playing this game. 
where they've criticized and impressed. Nobody thought we could win. We had to play up there against 105,000 people. They were number one in the country. We were 17 point underdog. We had a terrible week of practice. And then on Friday, Woody Hayes came up and said, there can be no great victories without tremendous adversity. This is an opportunity for you to have a great victory. It's not something to be negative about. Because you had a tremendous challenge. So all these things that made it a big challenge is also an opportunity for you to succeed and an opportunity to have a great win. So everybody's attitude turned around, we're very positive and the way we might play the game and we won. Because we looked at it as an opportunity and that's how you need to look at every challenge that you have, whether it's in school, at home, or in sports. Everything is an opportunity. And then the last thing I want to talk to you about, guys, is pride in performance. Does it mean anything to you to do the best that you can do? I don't care if it's in school, you're capable of making an A, don't be satisfied with the C. If you're capable of being the fastest guy on the team, don't come in second. So what kind of pride in performance do you have to be the best that you can be at whatever you choose to do? Because that is probably one of the most important things that you can have. Now, it's harder, it takes more work, because you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to get out of whatever you do, whatever you put into it, whether it's school. So if you do your best, uh, you're always going to be happy because you're going to know you did your best to be the best you can be at whatever you choose to do. People who aren't happy, they're always disappointed because they know they could have done better. So in this camp today, we want you to do, the, do your best. Right, but that's got to be something that you do every day and it becomes a part of what you want. So with that, you know, we're going to get started here. Ellis is going to break you all up right, in terms of uh, what group you're in. Uh, we're going to have two separate camps here today. The older guys will be outside, the younger guys will be inside and on the track. Right, but everybody has to pay attention. We cannot manage to get anything out of this with this many people if everybody doesn't do their part. You know, you guys hear all the time, there's no I in team. There is an I in winning. You know why? Because every individual on the team makes the team what it is. It's like that's going to be your responsibility today. As an individual, i got to do what I'm supposed to do, the way I'm supposed to do it. And we got guys in here talking and not paying attention. All right, so you're going to have a hard time doing that. But you're not paying attention. So pay attention, do what the coaches tell you. All right, we're going to be positive with you, I am going to focus on your improvement. So let's have a great day here together, okay? All right, give me three. Give me three. Thank you, Coach. All right, parents, campers, I forgot to mention the training room is in this corner. If you've got any issues, you can go to the training room. Parents, if your kid is 11, 12, or 13 years old, now is your cue to head outside. front of you. Finish your reps. If you're not done, finish them up. And if you are done, you should be looking ahead so we know you're done. You shouldn't be looking anywhere else. So that's the rocker series. The second part we're going to go to, the second exercise is called straight leg race series. Beamer players on your back. We'll start on the right leg. You're going to see them rip their right leg up. Go ahead. Right leg up and they're going to snap their heel down without touching the grass. They're going to go five reps on the right. Five reps on the left. You'll see them to the left. Then they're going to turn their side. Band and players, turn your side. They're going to do top leg, five reps. Then they're going to take their top leg, put the foot in the ground, and the bottom leg, five reps. I'll talk you through this here. On your back, on your back. Straight leg race series, starting on the right leg, five reps. Ready? Right leg, five reps, right now. Five reps. As soon as you get five reps to the right leg, I want to...